All right. Welcome to Cowbell Off Campus. Uh, first, I'd like to thank For Whom the Cowbell Tolls for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, visit ForWhomTheCowbellTolls.com. Check out all things Mississippi State sports via SB Nation. And uh, be sure to check out our podcast. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like this podcast. Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And thank you so much for listening. Uh, Addison, we had football on this weekend, dude. <laughs> Dude, it was awesome. I mean, it was a bunch of games I wasn't, you know, super excited about. It was actually a great weekend, though. I felt like, you know, I know we got a lot to talk about. Just, um, you know, I was excited to watch, like I said, Vandy play, which I never am. Um, but I feel <laughs> like they did pretty good. I mean, in that Northwestern Nebraska game, what a what a season opener, honestly, you know. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about first. Nebraska versus Northwestern was a heck of a way to start the college football season. It was actually a really good game. And yeah. um, poor Scott Frost, I mean – the guy's coming into his, his next year in Nebraska, and he's already on the hot seat to start the season. His seat is flaming hot, and they already want him gone. People are already suggesting that Dan Mullen take over his position as head coach at Nebraska. What are your thoughts on this game? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the Dan Mullen thing first. You know, that, that might be a great idea for Nebraska <laughs> if they're fine with just winning eight games every year. You know, if they're good with winning six to eight games, then, and then that'd be better than Scott's doing. So, you know, maybe <laughs> they need that over there. Um, but I think he's a good coach. I think Scott Frost is a good coach. I, you know, I don't really, obviously, we're not seeing that right now in, in what, uh, what he's performing over there. You know, I mean, he hasn't done too well. Um, and I feel like he's kind of starting, he's obviously feeling that. I mean, even in the press conferences, I feel like the guy's just really, kind of going overboard right now to solidify himself as the head coach and um yeah I think the only thing he needs to do is just win football games and he's not doing it so so one of the crazy stats that I saw um I asked Siri in the middle of the game what was the final score to the Nebraska versus Northwestern game last year and Nebraska beat Northwestern last year 56 to 7 yeah that's crazy and then went over to Ireland <laughs> Which was pretty neat. I mean, come on. That would be so cool to – I mean, if Mississippi State ever went over to Ireland, I'm going. There's no doubt. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That would be a blast. But you know some hey. Northwestern fans were partying hard after that win in Ireland. They had <laughs> to. And, and honestly, like, I do want to just, like, shout out the Nebraska fans a little bit because they showed up. I mean, they that did. was that looked was like shocked. a Nebraska home game. So, I do want to say, you know, their, their fan base is obviously supporting it. It's nothing like that. Um, you know, it's – it's uh. At this time, they just need to get some talent in there, and, and Scott Frost has got to figure out how to win some games. I don't know. And I saw a stat, and I don't. And I know I'm going to say this wrong, but he's something like five and twenty or five and twenty-five in games that are closer than three point. Three points are closer, and that is that's tough. I mean, that's it's not like he's losing by a lot. I mean, he's getting these games close. He just can't finish. You know, he's struggling to finish games out. Please, so, did you watch most of it? I did. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Yep. Um. <laughs> How about that onside kick after they took the lead? That that was what lost in the game. I don't know. I, I was sitting there trying to, like, figure out what the thought process was behind that. I mean, I guess he was just wanting to be risky. I really – I I don't know because, I mean, that gave Northwestern the chance to go score that. I mean, they went and scored on the next drive easily. Um, you know, that, that quarterback from South Carolina, I mean, Helensky, he was on fire all game. Um, I remember watching him get hurt at, at South Carolina. So it's cool to see him kind of, you know, get, get back at it. And he was a great quarterback. So yeah, that, that was just not a good decision all around really. I mean, there were several different play calls that were just dumb, but that one was stupid and ignorant. Like they, so they didn't score the rest of the game after that. And then the, right. and Northwestern went down the field and scored twice after that happened. So He's got to be looking back on that and kicking himself for it. But, yeah. okay, so that great way to start the season. I was just happy football was on TV. I mean, me and my wife were cooking buffalo chicken dip, eating some ham and cheese sliders. We were ready mm. that just football was back on TV, and it felt good. On um, Saturday. <laughs> it felt so good. And then Vanderbilt played, and I'll be honest, I started watching the game, and there were two pretty bad teams playing football. And yeah. – I fell asleep. Um, I work at a church um, and we have to wake up really early on Sunday mornings. So I fell asleep when the score was, I think it was 14 to 10 Vandy. Okay. And so I was like, you know, Hawaii could come back and win this game, to be honest. I, I wouldn't put anything past Vanderbilt. I woke up the next morning <laughs> and could not believe my eyes. Yeah. It completely changed. I think what happened was is Vandy realized that they just need to run that quarterback they need to run that dude. And I mean, he's one of the fastest QBs I have ever seen. 
Um, and they just need to just not – they don't need to throw the football. They literally just need to rely on the run game, run a read option, and just stick to that. And they did. And they dominated once they, they kind of came to that conclusion. But, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. It was kind of crazy. I was like, man, Vandy's getting ready to, to win maybe two games this year, maybe. Um, and then I will say they, they, they made good adjustments, and they, they played really well the rest of the game. But, yeah, that was, uh, it, was a, it was a tough start for them. If I, could, if I could give any advice to Clark Lee, the Vanderbilt head coach, I would say run the Nick Fitzgerald offense with Mike Wright. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. that dude can run the football. I think he rushed for 163 yards, but he only passed for like 140. So like, <laughs> just just give him the ball, let him take off. Because once they did, their offense was moving. Apparently, I didn't watch the, rest of the game. I just woke <laughs> up and it was, woke up and I checked the score and it was like 63 to 10. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, it, it went uh they they took it there quickly too so i i think we all do need to calm down though and let everyone know that vanderbilt is not good like they're that's a that's a performance against hawaii that was not a good hawaii team at all yeah. vanderbilt's got bama in three weeks and it's that's yeah. gonna be rough so yeah it, it's it's yeah, the same yeah. old vandy Exactly. We have to acknowledge that like that Hawaii team too was like way down. Um, they lost like half their, well over half their players, their coach is gone from last year. Uh, it, it's, it's not even the same Hawaii team at all. It's like honestly almost a brand new team over there. So they're kind of starting from like ground zero. And so Vandy and SEC team should be able to go over there and do exactly what they did to a Hawaii team. That's a, a, a team that's not even a good Hawaii team, you know? So well, hey, football's back on TV. Week zero is behind us, and mm -hmm. this is game week. I am feeling all sorts of emotions. I'm not yep. scared yet, but as soon as we kick off, my heart will be beating out of my chest. I'll start to get the yep. nerves. But right now is pure excitement about watching some really good football in week one. We've got some great games coming on this weekend. But first, before we do that, we're going to preview the Memphis Tigers. We're going to talk about what they did last season. We'll talk a little bit about last year's game, who they return. We'll give a score prediction. And then uh, to end the podcast today, we'll pick the spread of all of our SEC games of the week. And then uh, we'll have one non-conference game of the week that we'll pick the spread on. I'm sure if you're a college football fan, you know what game that will be. Um, but that's how we'll finish out the podcast. So first, the Memphis Tigers – just like general thoughts on what happened last year to what is going to happen this year. Is it going to be the same? Is it going to be a very, very different game? What do you expect to happen? Yeah, I expect it to be a completely different game. Um, you know, I, I do want to say like we, yes, we lost to Memphis. Yes, there was the whole thing that happened with the punt that was just absolute craziness. It, it was a flute game that we lost. I mean, that never, number one, that never should have happened from a referee standpoint. The referee should have stopped that from the get-go. Um, but with that being said, we never should be close enough against the Memphis team for that to even matter. If that happens, that's just like, okay, they scored a touchdown. Let's move on. You know, we're, we should be beating them by three points or three, uh, three possessions right now. And we weren't doing that. So, I mean, the fact that that even happened and that did decide the game, I mean, that's on us. That's on Mike Leach and the team. And, and we should be able to bounce back and win this game big this year. I think our players are going to have a chip on their shoulder from that game. Um, I think we know that this is a must win. Memphis is not a walkthrough game. It's not like a, uh, you know, they're they're a pretty solid power five or not power five team, but they're a pretty solid team that we that we play every year. They send people to the NFL. Um, you know, they've got they've always got some good receivers, always got a, a pretty decent running back. So I don't think it's a game that we look over, but I think it's a game that we should come out and dominate. And I think it should look very, very different from last season. So completely agreed. Um what we'll do is I'll ask you a few over under questions on what's going to happen this Saturday. Uh, I've been asking the question this Saturday. Will I hate saying will, will Rogers, will, <laughs> will Rogers pass for over or under 375 yards? I think he does pass for over 375 yards. Um, with that being said, I mean, last year he passed for 419. Um, and we lost. So if, if we are, if we're looking at last year, then we've got to, and he's got to throw for over 375. I mean, he's got to throw for over 400 uh, for us to come out there and win this game. And especially against a team like Memphis, I think we could definitely tear that defense up. So that that's a good reminder just about how crazy that game was last year. He threw for over 400 yards. 
if you would have asked me three years ago, if we had a quarterback throw for 400 yards, do we win or lose? I would say there's never a chance that we lose. Um, <laughs> right. it, it blows my mind. But the, the craziness of that game is we opened up with two turnovers to start the game. I don't, I don't want any of that first game jitters to happen on Saturday. And that's the thing that makes me the mo- most nervous about Saturday is there were so many times last season where we wouldn't get off to a great start and we didn't go down the field and score on our first possession. And that's what I want to see from this team is go down the field, make it a clean first drive, go get a touchdown and just have the padding of seven to nothing to start the game off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And honestly, like with that being said, I noticed a lot of last year, like we would drive the ball well. And then that red zone offense, I feel like our red zone offense is is tight. I know our playbook's tight because we're air raid. I know it's tougher for us and we don't have the the space but we've got to complete and finish drives. We cannot get down there and settle for three points. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like us to almost have a, a freaking 90% red zone rating this year because that is that would be a huge improvement from last year. I don't want to see us go down and kick a field goal. I want to see us go down and, and put six points on the board consistently. Totally agree. That red zone offense struggled at times last season. I think that's one thing we as state fans period want to see different and hopefully Mike Leach has worked on during this off season and mm-hmm. preseason. Um, another over under for you, Dylan Johnson rushes for over a hundred yards. That's a tough one. Um, you know, will, will he have over a hundred yards? Absolutely. Will he rush for over a hundred yards? I, you know, I honestly don't know. I mean, it really depends. Um, I think one funny thing about that is I think we'll have some plays where he runs over right in front of Will Rogers and Will Rogers just technically it's technically a pass, but it's like a maybe a yard pass, maybe not even a yard pass. Um, So I think we'll have some plays like that. I don't know if he rushes for over 100. If he does, I feel like we're putting the uh, we're putting the ball on the ground a lot more than I would imagine. Um, But I feel like he'll have at least 100 to 150 all purpose yards. Um, through the ground and through the air. Uh, I think he ran for like 80 something yards last, uh, or, or I'm sorry, I think total we ran for 50 yards and that was like all coming from him last, uh, last game. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think he goes for over a hundred, but I think he does, you know, go around 150 all purpose in this game. So. Um, if you don't know Woody Marks, Jaquavis Marks is uh, out in game one uh, with an injury. Now, let me ask you this. Would your answer have changed if I had asked you that for Woody Marks? Um, you know, I don't think so. I think same thing. I think he's going to have a lot of all purpose, maybe not rushing, you know, and he might, and a hundred, I think a hundred rushing yards in this offense is us tearing it up on the ground, honestly. Um, because, and it's just the way that we run, we're not like really running the ball for deep or for long rushes. We're running the ball to move the chains and, and set us up for another pass play. Um, and then, like I said, a lot of times those, those pass plays that we do have that are considered pass plays, they're like one to two yard tosses from, uh, from Will to the backfield. So, I mean, it's not like these guys are, are carrying – it's not like these guys are catching it downfield. They're catching it in the backfield and making stuff happen still. So I wish there was a way you could pull that statistic of, like, it's a really a, it's really a running play, but it's, a, it's considered a pass in the stat book because it's like a little dump pass. Like, I wish right. you could incorporate that into Dylan Johnson's rushing yards just to see how he ends up because you're right – that it's really a run. He's he's probably gonna have over a hundred yards uh, altogether, but probably not on the ground. Uh, probably right. won't be as many handoffs. But I mean, man, we threw the ball sixty-seven times against Memphis last year. Um, that's a lot of passing. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> he, Will Rogers threw. Four, you said it already. Four hundred nineteen yards, three touchdowns. Um, we we have four touchdowns on the day. Dylan Johnson gets a touchdown. Uh, what do you think the over under this year for six touchdowns against Memphis is? I think, um, I think over, I think we go over, I think we're going to put up points. Uh, and that's what I want to see, uh, as a fan coming from the, what happened last year, um, in this game alone, not just the season itself, but in this game alone, I think we go over six touchdowns. And I think, I think that's a dominating win too. I don't, I hope we can hold them and not let them score more than, you know, two to three. Um, and I think we should definitely put up more than six touchdowns for sure. Yeah, I you said something about just it's going to be a different game. It, you, you hope to see a dominating win. I do expect it to be a different game. One of the reasons being Memphis returns four starters from last year. Now, one of them is the guy who touches the ball the most, their quarterback. They do return their starting quarterback. He started 11 of 12 games last year, but they returned four starters overall. Um, I, I see that as a really good thing for Mississippi State, but 
One guy that we don't return is Makai Polk. Makai Polk had 11 receptions for 136 yards last year in this game with a touchdown. Who is your guy to replace Makai Polk in this game? And really this yeah, season. And, yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, honestly, let's look at it. So, I mean, you, you got Makai Polk and Malik Keith, the two guys that scored receiving touchdowns on our wide receiver core that are not here. Uh, well, Jaden Wally scored one as well, so I don't, I don't want to forget about him. Um, and he's actually going to be the guy that I think takes over. Uh, so, I mean, just on that point, you know, the, the third guy that scored out of that, out of that receiver core is the guy that I think is going to be our go-to for this game. Um, I think Jaden Wally is going to be the, the new Makai Polk, uh, for lack of a better term. You know, I think he's going to be the one that, uh, that really opens up our other receivers, um, to, to, to catch the ball. You know, obviously in this, in this offense, we want to spread it out. We want to see a lot of our receivers get touches, but I think Jaden is the one that we go to the most. Um, but yeah, we, we're definitely missing Makai Polk and we're definitely missing um, Malik Keith as well. But also on, on the other end of that, I mean, they're missing their stud. Calvin Austin, the third was the guy that scored both of their receiving touchdowns for Memphis and they're losing him too. So, I mean, it's not like both sides aren't kind of hurting um, on the receiver core. I do think we have a lot more depth than they do. And, you know, I think we're going to see some guys that we're not really used to seeing this year, but I think Jaden's the one that steps up and takes the mantle as the, as the top dude. Speaking of guys that we're not used to seeing, we saw him some last year, but his name is Caleb Ducking. Uh, there's a lot of people talking about this guy, Caleb Ducking. He played his freshman and sophomore year at Holmes Community College, uh, redshirted his junior season, and then last year had uh, some decent games. He he played against La Tech and NC State, Vanderbilt, mm-hmm. Tennessee State, and Texas Tech. Um, there were times where we saw him. He's a big guy, very tall. He's 6'5", 200 pounds. I think that this is a guy who could come in and do something. Um, I think this is an interesting question, and I don't mean to make you contradict your last statement, but who has the most touchdown passes, I mean, touchdown receptions this Saturday, Caleb Ducking or Jaden Wally? I'm going to say, I'm going to go Jaden, um, honestly. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to even throw a third name in the mix there just because I don't think we should forget him. I mean, where's Austin Williams at too? You know, I think we need to be looking at him because there's a good chance that, that Jaden or, or Caleb are the guys getting all the receptions. And then we have somebody else that's actually c- catching the ball in the end zone, like an Austin Williams. And I think that's the role that we want Jaden to play this year. It's like, Hey, this is the guy you guys are defending. So y'all are really marking him, but we've got two or three other receivers in the end zone that can catch the football. Um, I do think, I think Jaden's our, go- our guy for now. Uh, I just haven't seen a lot out of Caleb obviously this year yet. So I'm very excited to see. I mean, if he does step in and become that person, I would love to see that. But I think we just got to kind of see what happens week one. But I think as of now, Jaden's my my go-to. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people talking about this guy right now. They're, I'm hearing podcast after podcast after radio show talk about Caleb Ducking is the dude this year. Um, I think it's going to be interesting because he will be playing Makai Polk's position. Jaden Wally will stay in that same position and they'll be on opposite ends of the line. Um, that's dangerous. <laughs> if Caleb Ducking mm-hmm. can get off to a hot start, the uh, Makai Polk proved last year that that's a dangerous duo if they can both be hot starting the season early. So um, this is an interesting uh, first game of the season. It's not one that you necessarily overlook like Troy, um, but it is a game that is uh, you're looking at it going, you need to win. Um, we're favored by two touchdowns right now, not a big spread, just 14 points. Uh, what's your score prediction for this Saturday? I'm going to say that we come in and I, you know, I want to see a lot offensively. I'm thinking like a 42, I'm thinking like a 42 to 21 score us, us winning the game. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, I want to see us put up a lot of offensive production and, and I'm, I'm saying that they put up 21 as kind of like a, a Rudy Poot last second, you know, into the game. They're just putting up points to put up points type thing. Our, our, our scrubs are in type touchdown. Um, I think we dominate this game and I, and I think we should do it in a, in a big fashion. So I'll give us a 45, 14. I'll make it real close to what you said. I'll let you pick first so that I could uh, balance mine off of that. 45, 14 is my prediction. 42, 21 is Addison's. Uh, We'll see. I think it's going to be a different game than last year. And I know all of us are hoping and praying. So, so let's get into this week in sec football. We've got some, some really decent games going on. You know, there's a lot of times where week one, isn't very good. This is not the case. Um, right. we've, we've got some really good games going on in the SEC. Um, first, starting off on Thursday night with Missouri and LaTeX. Now, 
Mississippi State started the season off with La Tech last year <laughs> and proved to us that that is not a game that you can just walk through. <laughs> um, so right now the line stands at 19 and a half Missouri and it's at Missouri. So uh, what do you, what, who you got in the points there, Missouri or La Tech? I think Missouri covers. I think they win by three touchdowns. They should in their home. You know, I, it's, it's exactly what you said though. I mean, La Tech's not a walkthrough by any means. They've always got a pretty solid team. They're, they're the type of team that you do overlook and you probably shouldn't, you know, they come in and, and put, they always play better than you expect them to. Um, I do think Mizzou covers that. I do think they should, they should cover that. I guess is what I'm trying to say. They should win by, you know, at least three possessions, at least three touchdowns. Um, so that, that's where I have it right now. I think they, they, uh, they go over there on the 19 and a half. So. Look, I get a little bit of an advantage here since you're picking these first, but there's probably some that I will just go the opposite of you to be the opposite of you. So I'll, I'll pick La Tech to cover the 19 and a half. Um, I think if, if last year's Mississippi state game uh, just proved to me that there's a lot of first game things that you don't have worked out. And I don't think Missouri is going to have them worked out. And I think La Tech covers the 19. I do think Missouri will win the game, but I think yeah. La Tech covers uh, ball state at Tennessee. And these are interesting games because the line's always huge, right? So, Ball State at Tennessee, and Tennessee's favored by 35. That's tough. Um, Tennessee's getting a lot of hype preseason right now. Uh, I think a lot of people love them, and I do too. Um, but I'm ready to see them play because I, I think Tennessee's kind of had a lot of hype over the last several seasons, um, and we just they haven't come through at all. So, with that being said, I don't think they score more. I don't think they put up over 35 points in a spread on on ball. I think they should absolutely. I would love to see them do that. I want to see Tennessee back as as a as the stud, the the team that they've always have been. But I want I I'm, I need to see it to believe it type uh type fan with them and I just don't believe it right now. So if we can get after week 1 and they dominate then you know I I would love to be wrong here, but I don't think they they go over 35 against them. I'll agree with you on that one. I'll take Ball State to cover the points. Um Starting off, so those were the two Thursday night games. There's some, there's some, some more Thursday night games that are non-conference that are pretty good too. I'll be mm -hmm. watching. I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling everything. I can't stop watching it. It's, you know, it's that yeah. time of the year. So, absolutely. 11 a.m. Sam Houston at Texas A&M, number six, Texas A&M. There's not even a spread on it, so we're gonna skip that one. I imagine we just both picked Texas A&M to win that game. <laughs> And then uh, Oregon, this one's interesting. Number 11, Oregon at Georgia, and the line is 17. Yeah, Georgia beats them handily. They beat them well over 17 points. Um, I, I will, you know, quick shout out to our old coach, Joe Mo over there at Oregon. Um, I don't think that he's got it. I don't think he's got an inning to put up. So, so he's not there anymore. Um, oh, is he not? Okay, he's I did not he's actually, at, I didn't either. I actually looked that up this morning. He's the head coach of Akron right now so oh, wow that's great yeah. well i did not know that so i take back my statement um, also this game isn't at georgia it's in uh the superdome it, or not superdome mercedes-benz stadium in atlanta so it's okay. it's neutral site i guess i mean it's still in georgia so right. there'll be definitely be more georgia fans there but 17 you said you got the dogs yeah i still even 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 with jomo not being in oregon i still think they uh i think georgia handles that pretty easily so that one, 17 points is a weird line, but I think Georgia maybe gets a last second field goal or last second touchdown in the fourth quarter with their backups in and probably goes up by three touchdowns. So, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll also pick the dogs to cover there. I'm excited to watch this next game. This one's also at 2.30 on ESPN, number 23 Cincinnati at Arkansas. Arkansas is favored by six right now. Yeah. Um, Arkansas is going to blow that out of the water. I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. If I was, you know, if I was betting, I'd, I'd probably put a lot of my, uh, my net worth into this game right here because over six against the Cincinnati team, like I know they had a good season last year. I know that they were super hyped up. You know, they're, they're, they're coming in ranked this year. Arkansas is going to dominate. I mean, I, I would, I would pick Arkansas last year to dominate Cincinnati at any point in the season. Um, I would pick Mississippi State to dominate this game by more than seven points. You know, I, anybody, Vandy, Vandy, I'd still be pretty excited about to beat Cincinnati. I mean, it's no hate against Cincinnati. It's just the teams they play are not SEC caliber, and this is a good Arkansas team. Um, like I said, I would put a lot of my net worth into this into this bet right here. I feel pretty confident that Arkansas is going to win that by more than seven. Um, I've been wrong before, but I don't. I'm, I'm pretty confident in this one. How about that? The the former playoff contender 
number 23 Cincinnati goes to Arkansas, gets dominated. You heard it here first. Arkansas <laughs> dominates Cincinnati. I also have them winning by more than six. I just, I really think that bit, that game being at home and the talent level and the returning talent that they, they, they dominate that win. So uh, next game is one that I'll be pulling for uh, the, the Troy. Um, what, what's Troy's mascot? <laughs> I don't <laughs> even know. Idea. Trojans, the Troy tro- Trojans. I'll be pulling for them. And the line right now, uh, Troy at Ole Miss is Ole Miss 21 and a half. Yeah. Um, I hate to I hate to say it. I think they're going to cover. I think Ole Miss is going to win that one big. Um, I mean, OM. That's the last time you'll hear me say the uh, those two words put together. Um, but yeah, I think OM wins that game pretty uh, pretty handily there. Honestly, um, I think they should. I know that we're looking at a new quarterback, new new uh, new team under Lane Kiffin, but I I still think he wins and wins big there. So I was trying to find Troy's um, record from last year. I knew I know they're not great, but. No, that's 2020. I was gonna say they beat Middle Tennessee, but that was two years ago. Um, I, I all I'm hearing is Troy's not good at all. Like they're not even the Troy that they were a few years ago, where mm-hmm. they would compete like a La Tech or something like that. But I, I'm with you. I think I think Ole Miss pretty much dominates this game, even with Luke Altmyer or um, the the transfer quarterback. So. Yeah. Um, now this game, <laughs> I mean, I, I keep saying it, but this game's going to be really interesting too. Number seven, Utah at Florida, six p.m. in the swamp. Utah is fl- is favored by three right now. Okay, that's a good one. That's a great game. Um, that that's one of those that I have legitimately no idea. Uh, any given time, I'm obviously going Florida over over a Utah team, but this is such a weird scenario for Florida where we're at right now. Um, coming off of, you know, they're, they've got new coaches, new staff there. I mean, their team is new. We don't really know what their, uh, what their recruiting portals look like. I really, everything in, in me is telling me to go Florida here. Um, that, and so, and, and what's the line is Utah favored in this game or is Florida yes, favored right Utah's now? favored by three. I'm sorry. So oh, you cut it out a little bit. Utah's favored by three. Yep. Utah's favored by three. Yeah, I, I think Florida covers that. Um, I just cannot vote or, or go for Utah in this game uh, in Gainesville. I just don't think that that's a possible I, – I think that Florida should win this game, even though Utah's ranked number seven. They're coming – you know, it, it's a long travel for them. Um, I really do think that Florida covers that, uh, and I, I think they should win. But like I said, this is tough right now because we just don't know what to expect out of them. So I told myself when you were picking this game that I would do the opposite. So I'm picking Utah. Um, it's, it's a pick em game. Uh, I do think the swamp is going to be rocking at 6 PM on the first weekend of college football with number seven, Utah coming to town. I, I, I hate that it's at six o'clock cause our game's at six 30, but, um, I'll be, uh, hopefully we're dominating and I can get out of there and go watch that mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah. we'll roll through some of these Miami of Ohio at number 20, Kentucky, Kentucky's favored by 16. They should cover Yeah. They should win by at least 17 there. I agree. Uh, I'll take Kentucky as well. Mercer at Auburn. There's no line. I'll take Auburn. <laughs> I, yep. I imagine you will too. Um, yeah. There's no line for Elon at Vanderbilt. I just, I guess Vandy wins that game too. I mean, mm-hmm. they're opening up the season with some great games. Um, and then Utah State at Alabama. The lines that they give Alabama are stupid. Um, 41 and a half Alabama. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I mean, I, I don't think they cover 41 and a half, but I mean, I could very well be long, wrong because I mean, they could come out and just absolutely smoke. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say they don't put up over 41 points on that team, but I really honestly don't know. I mean, they, they easily could, but you, like you said, the line is just stupid. So never bet against Alabama. I'll take Bama to, to get 42 on them. So um, Georgia state, this one's a weird line, Georgia state at South Carolina, South Carolina is only favored by 12 and a half. Oh, okay. I, I will say they should, they should win by at least two touchdowns there to a Georgia state team. So um, Georgia state, to be... they're interesting though. They, they have competed. They're one of those teams that compete with some of the, the bigger schools, but 12 and a half is pretty small. Yeah, I think South Carolina covers, and and I think we're we're we. This is kind of not like a rebuild year for them, but kind of like a start year. I think South Carolina should 
cover. And I think we'll see like a better program out of them over the next couple of years with the new coach and everything over there. So if that's the case, they should cover this against the Georgia state team. I'll take South Carolina to cover that 12 and a half as well. Um, before we get to our game, we'll do Florida state at LSU. This is on a Sunday night. It is at the Superdome in new Orleans. And uh, the line right now is LSU by three. LSU will win that game by more than three points. Um, I think Florida State's down. And and being in the Superdome, that's a home game for our LSU because, you know, I, I've definitely been a Saints fan. And every time I go over there, those guys, it's it's literally the same fans that cheer for both teams. So, yeah, I, I think LSU covers that and wins by more than three. So. Did you get to watch any of Florida State this past weekend? I did not. Uh, I turned it over and saw they were absolutely dominating. I don't even remember who they played, and then that was that was all I watched. So. Yeah, it was. I mean, they had a few. Uh, I think they had over three guys or three guys with over a hundred yards uh, on the ground rushing. But I mean, it was a. I think it was a FCS school, so like nothing crazy. Um, I've also got LSU winning that game, and I imagine even if they win by touchdown more than three. So um, I'll I'll take LSU to win that one as well. All right. And our uh, we'll do the first non-conference game of the week, and then we'll do our score or our spread predict prediction. And so the non-conference game of the week is Notre Dame versus Ohio state. Ohio state right now is favored by 17 and a half. That's crazy. Um, I think that's such a tough one. I do think uh, Ohio state covers. I think that they win by, I think they win big. They should. The predictions we're seeing, I mean, I, I was watching, you know, obviously watching college game day and and Ohio State's, a lot of these guys, a lot of the analysts have them in the top four. Um, that's about all I know about them, to be honest. I know that they had some some studs coming back from last year. You know, they had a pretty good team. They, you know, everyone's loving this coach. If if the analysts are right and if everyone thinks that they are as good as, the, as everyone's saying they are, then they should win that game against Notre Dame, who just lost their coach, who's always kind of been um, a down team. They should beat them by more than uh, than than the uh, the spread there. With that being said, I don't know, though. I think it's going to be a, a great uh, opener for them to see how good they actually are. Um, it's going to be a fun game to watch. So your pick is Ohio State? Yeah, Ohio State, yeah. Okay, I'll go Notre Dame. And not only will I say Notre Dame covers, I'll go as far to say Notre Dame gets the upset in week one in a crazy <laughs> Saturday night game with a new coach that they brought – well, didn't bring in. He was already there, defensive coordinator. Yeah. They're excited to have him. The players get behind him. I sound crazy, but I think they go get the dub. That's who I'll be pulling for on Saturday night. I would absolutely love it, to be honest. So <laughs> I'm pulling for Notre Dame with you. <laughs> That's be awesome. So our spread is uh, Mississippi State by 15. I believe if everything we've been saying on this podcast comes true, we both pick Mississippi State to win by more than 15. Absolutely. I think that if if just what you said, if we have more than six touchdowns, I think our defense holds them to under three touchdowns. So I, th- I think we win by uh, more than 15 points. It's just one of those things where it's going to be different than last year, and I really hope we don't have those first game jitters and we come in prepared and ready to roll. Yeah, and I think if we don't win by more than 15, it's going to be a different podcast moving forward because we're going to have to really talk about gaps on the team here. Um, we should win this game by more than 15 points, and, yeah, I think that's just – that's really all i got to say about it. I'm, I'm excited to watch us get get out there and play. Um, and, yeah, let's go dominate Memphis. Whew, I just got chills. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm having a problem not wearing anything but maroon this whole week. <laughs> and I, it's like I, every time I just go – pull out my drawer and I get to look at a t-shirt and I'm like, I want to wear maroon for some reason. It's just <laughs> it's in my veins right now. So uh, th- thank you all for listening uh, this week. We've covered the Memphis Tigers. Everybody have a fun weekend in Starkville, wherever you are watching games. It's going to be a great weekend of college football. Um, next week we will be covering what went right and what went wrong. Uh, we're, we'll definitely have something to talk about on both sides. It's the first game. We'll be able to hit on some good, the good things that we did and some bad things. So please tune in next Thursday, and then we'll also preview the Arizona Wildcats. So thank you so much for listening. Absolutely.